guess it isn't holiday break. Everyone's here, so <laughs> thank you for that. And it's great to be with all of you today. And I want to welcome all of the people here who've come from all over the place to report this important news. And I'd like to single out some people here that I think are quite special, and they made a special effort to join us. You heard we have former coaches from Michigan in Lloyd Carr, Gary Moeller, and Jerry Hanlon. The Michigan faithful will always stop to shake their hands and thank them for all they've done over the years for this great university. Let me do that as well as they unselfishly helped me in thinking through this coaching transition. All of these gentlemen coached under the late great Glenn E. Bo Schembechler. And with a simple phone call, we have Bo's wife, Kathy Schembechler, here, who made a huge effort through holiday break and snowstorms in Denver to join in this celebration today. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> we also have here today Michigan Regents Kathy White, Larry Deitch, and Andrew Richner, all of whom have been so helpful in the process that we constructed that resulted in this great outcome. And while I'm mentioning the top leadership of the university, let me also thank our president, Mark Schlissel, who had just arrived less than six months ago this summer. He was terrific to me in council as a person to brainstorm with, and more importantly, as a touchstone of what the university seeks in its destiny of being leaders and best in academics and athletics. And finally, I inv invited uh, members of my team, two of whom have knocked themselves out since we started this project, Chrissy Raywalk and Mike DeBoard, plus Tim Lynch, who's the VP and general counsel. Whenever you do a deal like this, there's a lot of legal work. Thanks to all three of them. Well, as you hear of my selection for our head coach, you should also know that I broke one of the cardinal rules of negotiation. I fell in love with the guy from the other side. And his name's John Dennison, and he played an enormous part in bringing the coach home. John, round of applause. <laughs> so I'm sorry for the preamble, because I know you want me to get on with it, but this part of the program is really what it's about being at Michigan. We recognize the team first. On December 3rd, I asked you to be patient with me as we started this search. And we pledged to you a deliberate nature of our work, and we discussed how broadly we were going to search for this coach. We did that. We went through a deep think phase that led to our point of view today. Many fans, alumni, past players, they took the time to give me input. I even talked to our current team twice about this decision. Safe to say I heard from lots of people. So today, I'm very pleased and proud to announce the 20th head football coach at the University of Michigan, Jim Harbaugh. The real talent in the family is Sarah Harbaugh. She's here with her children, Addie, Katie, Jack, and Jimmy and Grace. And Jim's brother-in-law, John, and niece Kennedy are here. Welcome to all of them. And a special welcome to Jack and Jackie Harbaugh. Jack was a coach here at Michigan for a number of years, and his wife, Jackie, they were both incredible assets to our Michigan family as they were building what seemed to be a cadre of exceptional leaders in athletics. Now, Jack was a coach when I played here, and as I told Jim, he never had a bad day. He was such a positive influence, and I'm glad he's back around our program. Thanks, Jack. Well, I mentioned that I talked to lots of people, and one particularly famous pro coach who had done broadcasting for many years told me this. You know, Jim Hackett, you didn't just get a great coach. You got the best coach in football today. College or pro in Jim Harbaugh. And you know, there are a lot of great coaches out there. He has a brother who's one. And we had many of them on our list. But when you ask how many of these coaches won at all levels, college and pro, it's hard to find someone to compare with. In my upbringing, I remember my dad talking about Paul Brown because he excelled at all levels. This guy is just like that. I could go on about him. 
He won 49 games in four years with the San Francisco 49ers. Just amazing. And considering that he has really strong competitors in that league, including another one with the initials JH, he faced a lot of competition in the pros and amassed a fantastic record. I think that Jim was likely, no, surely was a candidate for any of these pro jobs that opened yesterday. And yet, he chose to come home. At Michigan, Jim will make the same salary he was paid at the Niners. Jim has signed a seven-year deal. And a year from now, I will review the football program's progress, and the university will determine an appropriate deferred compensation arrangement, which I have to take into account market conditions at that time. As you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there for talent like this. Well, I don't plan on talking more about pay because I'm totally at peace with the fact that we have a win-win deal here. Well, we thought about a way to signal Jim's coming home, and I looked around campus and realized that Mays is everywhere. So today I'm wearing a Mays watch, and I've gifted these to the family and friends as a reminder of this very special day. Our guy came home. Please join me in welcoming Jim to his first press conference as the J. Ira and Nikki Harris family head coach of the University of Michigan, Jim Harbaugh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> Got to apologize for my voice. They, uh, they dumped Gatorade over me uh, on Sunday after our ball game, and I've uh, lost my vocal cords a little bit. But um, And I don't know if anybody saw me trip on the way in. Anybody see that? <laughs> a lesser athlete would have gone down. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> but uh, there, are, there are very special words uh, that, uh, that are in the English language that we all embrace. Uh, there's family, there's friends, there's teammates, there's victory. I was reminded of another very special word when I was driving into Ann Arbor this morning, and, and that word is homecoming. Our family's had three uh, homecomings to Ann Arbor, Michigan in my lifetime. <clears throat> the first was in 1973 uh, when my dad was hired to coach the secondary at the University of Michigan. We came in in March, early March, and uh, we had nowhere to live. Uh, Bo Schembechler told Bob Sutton, who was a graduate assistant at the time, that the Harbaugh's were going to move into his, his apartment, which was in the basement of the golf course. Now, this was one heck of a deal, because there was a blizzard that uh, hit, hit Ann Arbor at that time, and the city was shut down, and uh, everything was shut down. But uh, my, my brother and I, John, we had the run of the golf course. <laughs> there was this basement that had putting greens, uh, uh, sandboxes, uh, baseball batting cages, and for three weeks, uh, it was heaven on earth. And then in 1982, I was uh, recruited to Michigan as a student athlete to play uh, for the legendary Bo Schembechler uh, and Coach Jerry Hanlon, who I see sitting over here with my quarterback coach, uh, Gary Moeller and Lloyd Carr were on that staff uh, as well. Uh, and my first team meeting, I was 10 minutes late to the first team meeting. Coach Schembechler told me that I would never play a single down at the University of Michigan <laughs> my entire career. <laughs> and then now, 2014, to uh, come back as a football coach at the University of Michigan. I have to tell you that uh, I have thought about that, dreamed about that since the time I was a young lad, uh, nine, 10 years old, and throughout, throughout uh, adult life, uh, dreamed about coaching at Michigan. And now it's time to live that. Uh, and I have no other words to really describe 
how that feels, um, except to tell you that I have great excitement uh, about the challenge of serving the University of Michigan as your football coach. I want to introduce my family. This is my wife, Sarah, Sarah Harbaugh. She's holding, uh, she's holding young Jack Harbaugh, who's named after his grandfather. I call him Mighty Jack the quarterback. <laughs> He's two years old. This is Addie Harbaugh, who is six years old. John Fearborn, my brother-in-law, a very, very close friend. Uh, my son, Jimmy Harbaugh, 18 years old. He is uh, getting ready to graduate from high school and, and looking to uh, start college in the fall himself. Uh, Katie Harbaugh is four. She's in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom and dad, Jack and Jackie Harbaugh. And I'm just going, going down the line. I want to introduce my daughter, Grace Harbaugh, who's 14 years old. She is a tremendous water player, polo player, and student. And uh, Kennedy Fearborn, uh, John Fearborn's uh, daughter, and my niece. I also want to thank uh, some very important people, the, uh, the Board of Regents at the University of Michigan. I want to thank President Schlissel. Uh, I want to thank Athletic Director Jim Hackett for having the confidence in me to, uh, and, uh, the confidence they've shown in me to bring me here to the University of Michigan. I <clears throat> also want to thank uh, Brady and Laura Hoke, uh, my very good friends, for their outstanding service at the University of Michigan. They have honored the University of Michigan football program, and I'm pleased to uh, have such a tremendous foundation uh, to stand on. And that foundation was built by, by Brady, by Lloyd Carr, by Gary Moeller, uh, by Bo Schembechler, uh, by Jerry Hanlon, by John Falk, by, by the men and, and, and women who have served the University of Michigan for over a century, for more than a century, uh, they've been playing football at the University of Michigan. I see Mary Paschlitz there. Uh, and all the former players, um, their families. Uh, I feel like I'm standing on this, this, this foundation that is, is so rock solid. Uh, I feel like I'm standing on the shoulders of tall, tall men. And uh, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank the alumni enough the students, the faculty, uh, for the enthusiasm that you've all shown uh, to my family and I. Top to bottom, Michigan is about excellence, is about greatness. And you have my pledge uh, that I will carry forward the tradition of excellence of the University of Michigan football program. Thank you very much. At this time, before we go into one-on-ones, we're going to have a photo opportunity. So I'd like to bring up uh, Jim Hackett, Jim Harbaugh, Lloyd Carr, and Gary Moeller. All right, if I can grab real quickly, can I have Jack Harbaugh and Jerry Hanlon please come forward? I need, I need you guys all to move back. Everybody please move back a little so we can get in the All right, 
we're going to get back into the Q&A here, so if you guys can all sit down, please. We're going to move into the Q&A portion of today. If you have a question, I would ask that you raise your hands. We have microphones on each side. We will pass them to you. We'll begin the uh, question and answer portion here in just a second. Please raise your please raise your hand so I know that you have the mic. All right, we're gonna start. We're gonna start on the left hand side here with Chris Ballas from the Wolverine. Jim, right here. Hi, you've already got you've already got guys in the NFL saying that this is a stopover for you. Can you talk about this as a destination job? <clears throat> you know, I've, I've really looked at. Uh, I've been I've coached now at the University of San Diego, coached at the univer uh, Stanford University. At the 49ers, four years. Uh, you know, it's like I, I look at it like I, I'm co going to construct a, a home, like what a, c a construction uh, architect or, or, you know, I got to think of myself more as a construction guy. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, you build, this, you build this home, and, and hopefully it's a great cathedral. Um, <clears throat> and then afterwards, uh, you know, they tell you, okay, go build another one. You know, you got, there's, some, there's some dirt down there. Uh, go build another home, and uh, and I, d I feel like that again. You know, I'm at that 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 point where, you know, even though you've done you've done well, you built some pretty nice homes. Uh, you know, you have to do it again, and you have to you have to prove it again. But I would really like to live in one permanently, uh, and, and that's what I'm and that's what I'm that's what I'm very hopeful for here. On the uh, on the far right there, Mark Snyder from the Detroit Free Press. Hey Jim, Mark Hi, Snyder, Mark. Detroit Free Press. How you doing? Saw you in the, in the, you were in the locker room. Yeah, yeah I remember San that. San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you, you said that you grew up dreaming of this. When was the first time, you know, either months, last couple months, that this seemed real to you? And then when did you actually make the decision that this was going to happen? Yeah, as I said, I, I can remember uh, thinking about it as a, as a young youngster, nine, ten years old. There was a time where I was sitting in uh, Coach Jim Beckler's office. I had my, I was sitting in his chair. I had my feet up on his desk, and uh, he walked in and said, "How you doing, Jim?" And I said, "I'm doing great, Bo. How you doing?" He said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'm, I'm sitting in your sitting in your chair, Coach." I couldn't I couldn't think of anything better to say, but uh, uh, but yeah, there's just been times in my life where uh, where uh, I've thought about it, dreamed about it, and now it's time to live it. Yeah. I mean, pretty much, I mean, I thought, thought about being a coach at Michigan. My dad coached at Michigan. I mean, uh, that was something that I, I really looked up to and wanted to, wanted to emulate from the time I was a, a youngster. So. All the way to the left here, Matt Shepard. Hey, Jim, there, there was a belief that this could have been a possibility earlier in your career. Why is now the right time for you? And Michigan with this fit. Oh, it's uh, again. I, mean, I want to thank the the board of regents. I want to thank the president, uh, our athletic director, for having the confidence in me to uh, to coach at the University of Michigan. That is a. I'm honored. I'm humbled, and uh, I'm very happy. And uh, I want my my family to be happy too. There was. Uh, there was there was a time where we we flew in and they had a gift bag for the kids, a hat, a scarf, uh, some some you know, sweatshirts, and the kids had them on. And it, that took me back to a place where uh, that took me back to a place. You know, that that took me back to walking into most sports shop uh, and looking at everything with big wide eyes, you know, hoping that uh, you would get something. And uh, we had a we used to, mo, most sports shop used to give us a 10 or 20 percent discount for for coaches families, and uh, that's what I would save my money for. I would save my money for 
and cut lawns and, and shovel snow and rake leaves uh, so I could go to most sports shop and, and get a get a pair of basketball shoes or get something with a with a big block M on it. And uh, so my kids were wearing that. That took that took me back to a place. To the far right, Fred Human. Hey Jim, over here, little guy. Fred over here. All right. Hi Fred. How you doing? Good. Hey, as I was out last night in East Lansing, as a matter of fact, somebody asked me if I was going to come to Ann Arbor and see the Messiah. I'm wondering how comfortable or uncomfortable you are with this perception that you're the savior of Michigan football. I'm not comfortable with that at all. As I, as I said. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, this is uh, I'm standing on a foundation that has been built for over 100 years uh, by some great men, and uh, I feel like I'm standing on those their shoulders, and uh, I want to do a good job. Uh, want to be good. Uh, we want to win. Want to win at uh, at practice. We want to win on the practice field. We want to win in the classroom. We want to win in the community. We want to win on fall Saturday afternoons, and uh, we'll have great expectations for that. Uh, we'll have great expectations for the first team meeting and the first week of, of winter conditioning. Can't wait. Over to your left, Rachel Lindsay. Jim, Rachel Lindsay from the Toledo Blade. Um, did you leave the NFL dismayed at all? If not, what are you going to take from the NFL and bring back to the University of Michigan and to your team? Uh, I don't have that list in front of me. Uh, you know, we're just we're going to hit the ground running and and, and, and uh, work extremely hard at it. Yeah. Did I leave the NFL dismayed? I don't I don't understand what that means. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In the middle, Ryan Armani. Jim Ryan Armani, Fox Two, Detroit Sports 105.1. To follow up on Fred's question a bit, there are so many people who see you and all your success uh, and how quickly some other coaches have done it in college football. Uh, how quickly do you think winning in Ann Arbor will be, uh, you know, the norm? Big Ten championships, national championships, et cetera. As I said, we have great expectations for the first week, you know, really great expectations for the first day of practice, the, the first team meeting. And uh, don't have a don't have a guarantee for you if that's what you're looking for or, or a prediction. In the middle on the right, Nick Baumgarten. Hey Jim, we're right here. Nick Baumgarten, M Live. Uh, financially, you're going to be paid the same as you were in San Francisco. You could have gotten more money in the NFL. Was it important to you? I mean, what's the reasoning behind all that? So some people have asked me that. I don't have that that list. I didn't make a pros and cons list. Uh, I really made a decision that I, from the heart, which I thought was best for uh, myself and, and our family, and very excited about it. Very challenged by it. On the left, John Borton. Coach, <coughs> right here, John Borton with the hey, Wolverine. Uh, if the man who coached you here was able to be standing here today, what do you think he'd say to you? That's a that's a great question. Uh, Steve, Steve Kordacki already asked me that question, and, uh, and I, what I told him was, I feel like he is here. You know, I feel like when I'm in, 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 standing next to Lloyd Carr and, uh, and Gary Moeller and, and my dad and Jerry Hanlon and, and John Falk, uh, John Gindy, uh, that, uh, to me that is, that's the same, that's the same people, that's the same feeling. And, uh, they said they were happy to have me here, and uh, and also that they would be willing to do anything to help, uh, which I will be taking you up on, Lloyd. <laughs> I will be taking you up on, Mo. Uh, appreciate that. On the aisle to the right, <clears throat> Coach Evan Paputo of the D Zone. Right here. Hello. Okay. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> my question is, how will you be able to sell this program? Were you that, were you that young uh, Michigan Daily reporter that was at the, no. the airport last night? No, that was not me. <laughs> Who's that? Where's that young man? That was you. Heck of a job. <laughs> Heck of a job. Now, there's a good. What's your name? 
Alejandro, stand up there, this guy. <laughs> there, there's a go-getter right there. That's a go-getter. Good job. Sorry about that. Uh, my question is, how are you going to be able to sell the program that's been down in the dumps the last couple years to future players that you're going out to meet? Michigan's always been great. There is a, it's, it's, it's always been great, and I always believe in it. Uh, what, 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 what's the best thing you could possibly, in terms of selling something, you're selling something that you believe in, in your core, uh, you know, to everything you know, and, and, and like you know your name, I know Michigan football, and believe in Michigan football. And uh, that's, uh, that will not be a hard job. All the way in the back, Jennifer Hammond. Last row back here. I just want to say, actually, I interviewed your dad at Western Michigan. He was the very first interview <coughs> I ever did when I worked at the sports information department there. So this is, this is exciting to have another Harbaugh interview. Um, I work at Fox 2 in Detroit, and I'm curious to know, with the way that Michigan's been roughed up uh, against the rivals over the past years, if you have any guarantees or perhaps any <laughs> <laughs> anything about Ohio State, and Michigan State that you can lend here today to the uh, fan base? They're outstanding programs. No, I, I, I make no guarantees. I, uh, I made a guarantee a long time ago, and uh, I've learned from that. I've grown. <laughs> I understand that you don't make guarantees. <laughs> On the aisle, Angelique. Angelique Shangel is from the Detroit News. Hi, Angelique. Hi. When, when did Jim Hackett first approach you and, and when did he offer you the job and how quickly did you accept, how, how quickly was this, uh, this deal made? Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty quick. It was, uh, it was a uh, very, yeah, very quick process. Can you say when he first contacted you and, and I don't remember the exact, exact day, but it's in the last, in the last uh, couple weeks, last Can weeks. You, when, when did you accept? Uh, yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> All the way in the back, Tom Lydon. Yep, signed on and flew out here yesterday. Jim, Tom Lydon right here in the back from WXYZ Detroit. You know, there were some comments you made a few years ago critical of the academics here at Michigan and how things were handled. How has that changed in your mind? Are you going to be instrumental in any further change moving forward? And how might your stance on that have changed over the years? Well, you know, that's a good question. There, there's uh, that was another thing that I didn't understand at the time uh, and didn't fully understand and made the mistake of not knowing that you don't compare things. Uh, you don't compare, and especially you don't compare great to great. And, and that's, that's what I did, and, and that, was a, that was a mistake. Um, I've since learned that, that you don't compare. You make a player one thing to another or one person to another or two great institutions uh, compared to each other because uh, somebody always gets diminished when you do that. So that's another lesson I have learned uh, you know, since eight years ago. On the aisle to the left, Matt Pargoff. Matt Pargoff, Amazing Blue News. Uh, Jim, where are you at as far as uh, finding assistant coaches and what sort of criteria are you looking for in that? Uh, th the best. Uh, and we're uh, we're in the process right now, and can't get, can't can't uh, tell you that it's going to move qu move uh, uh, fast or slow, but uh, hopefully it'll move right, and that's what we'll strive for. Uh, cut twice or measure twice and cut once. On the aisle here, Bob Wanowski. Jim, right here, Bob Hi, Wanowski, Bob. Detroit News. How are you? Good. You obviously have a history of quote-unquote turnaround projects, San Diego, Stanford, San Francisco. Looks like a turnaround situation here. What, how do you attack that? And you've done it in the past, obviously, experience-wise. What do you think you need to m attack most quickly here to get Michigan turned around? Like, like any team, and I, and I don't, I don't, I'm not agreeing that it's a turnaround. I mean, this is Michigan. There is no, there's no turnarounds in Michigan. This is, uh, this is, this is greatness. Uh, <coughs> long tradition of it. Um, but the important thing is the relationships um, as a team, you know, the, getting to know our players, them getting to know us as coaches, uh, 
And ultimately, that's, that's what a team is. It's a group of relationships that's, that is focused on achieving a goal together. And that's the most important thing uh, that I truly believe. Can I ask a quick follow-up? Just from a distance, how much did it pain oh. you to watch Michigan struggles the last six, seven years? I, mean, I, I, I saw some. I didn't see the struggles you're talking about. We'll go into the back uh, on the right, Dennis Fithian. Hey, Jim, back here. You don't want to make any guarantees about Michigan State or Ohio State, but can you talk about how you'll approach it? I mean, you've played in some, some great rivalry games. I mean, you were coaching in the pros against the Seahawks. Just what are you going to tell your guys about how to approach those games and the intensity that they have to have? First, understanding what their intent is, you know, what our, what our team's intent is going to be. And... Uh, you got to be willing to work for that. You got to be willing to earn that, and that's that's why I'm so excited for the for the first week of of uh, winter conditioning, you know, uh, to get that started. Let's find out exactly what our intent is. You know. All the way in the back left, Bernie Smilovitz. Jim, uh, I'm just curious. Your emotions flying here. Your emotions walking in here, knowing you're going to be the head football coach at University of Michigan last night and today. <coughs> As I said, very excited, very challenged. Uh, Nothing more than that. Any? Uh, that it's uh, yeah. As I, as I said, it's very very special. Uh, this is a homecoming. Uh, that would be the top of the list. We're gonna have time for a few more questions. We're starting on the left. Adam Biggers. I'm picking on a guy here who's got a bad voice. <laughs> Shame you, Barney. Jim right here, Adam Biggers, Bleacher Report. Given your fiery personality, the way, the way that you approach the game, do you feel like maybe you're going to be able to connect uh, better with, you know, back in the college game than maybe with the at the professional ranks? How do you feel your, uh, your personality translates to the college game? Again. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like it's the only personality I have. <laughs> <laughs> the other ones were all taken. <laughs> so, so I got this one, uh, but there's, and we all have it. We all have a great desire. There's a human agency uh, to be a part of a team, to be a part of something great, to be a part of something that that you're bigger than yourself. And and I have that that great desire, uh, and I'm couldn't be more excited, honored, humbled uh, to be a part of to this great team. Uh, very excited about that. On the right here, Nick Baumgartner. Jim, Nick Baumgartner, I'm live. Uh, you talked to the team earlier today. What did you? Uh, what was your message with them? I told them it's a little bit uncomfortable. I've never talked to a team uh, through a little speaker phone. Uh, I was I was I was talking to uh, Coach Carr and Coach Moeller earlier. I said, uh, well, you know, give me your thoughts. What would you What would you say into a speaker? But uh, basically, told them uh, we'll see him. Uh, we'll see him back here in. The, in a few days, the fifth or the sixth, we'll schedule uh, schedule a meeting and we'll get to work uh, on our on our <coughs> winter conditioning. We got two more questions. Sam Webb in the front. So Jim, I hear you saying that you've mellowed with age, right here. You've mellowed with age. Let's say that you have what? A, yeah, you have a young, brash, cocky, confident player who steps to the microphone and he offers a guarantee. How will you handle that? <laughs> Is that if, you, if you do that, then you got to back it up. All right, last question in the back, Greg Molson. Hi, Jim. Greg Molson from ABC 12 in Flint, way back here. Uh, first met you a long time ago, back on the longest night ever, if you remember that, uh, at Michigan. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> wanted to ask you, there was a lot of people saying you would never leave the NFL and that you were too competitive and wanted to be at the highest level. Can you talk about the decision? Did you look at college and NFL differently? Was it just because of Michigan? Why did you decide? to leave the NFL and come back to college? <laughs> As I said earlier, it, it, it was uh, a decision I basically made uh, without a list, without a pros and cons approach to it, and something that I've dreamed about, I felt it was time to live, a decision I felt like uh, ultimately I made with my heart for uh, myself and my family. Okay, thank you. Nobody! <laughs>